This talk was not numbered, but given between the numbers seven and eight. It comes directly from a book written by a priest, the same priest whose prayers are featured in two playlists on this channel. One is the second part of the fusion prayer in the daily prayers playlist, and the others are found in the playlist entitled Prayers by a Priest. While we were unable to have this dear priest online with us, we had his picture and I read the text. So here's the talk. As we know, there are three ways of praying in the divine will. Each is essential. The provenient prayer, the first prayer of the day, asking for everything we do to be fused into the divine will. Every act we do during the day, which we ask to be taken up into the divine will, as we go and as we think of it. Divine will, write these words in my writing them. Divine will, pray in my praying. Divine will, talk in my talking, and so forth. Rounds. These are ways of entering into the flow of love in all the areas of creation, redemption, and sanctification. This is the area on which I would dare to comment. God, the scripture confirms, has loved us first. Everything God ever did or does is done out of love for us. With his gift of allowing us to live in his divine will, he wants us to become part of that same love. We are to put an I love you back on the love with which he has been and is loving us in the bosom of the Trinity. We are to enter into that love process that is going on in the Trinity. I tried to do this by looking first at all the wonders of creation and loving him back for all I found he had put there for me. It was a big job because creation is enormous and made up of much that is profoundly small. Then I tried to deal with redemption and forever much I covered there was an infinite amount of love that was hard to realise and comprehend. I wanted to put my little I love you back onto a staggering amount of selfless love, both interior, at intra, and exterior, at extra, and I felt just so unable to do, unable for it all. Then there was the challenge of putting love back onto his love in all the holy things, the inspiring things, the gifts without measure heaped upon us and flowing over, that poured out of the Trinity's love process on us and about us, all those masses, answers to prayer, spiritual insights, graces, tender love. At first I tried cribbing, asking Our Lady to let me join her in her rounds, because to me it was all a question of time. My day was not long enough, my life was too short, there was so much that had to be done, and this indeed in the very divine will service of God. As a monk I had my daily mass, the various times in the day when we met to praise God in our divine office and Lexio Divina. There was my work in the guest house and being available to people's needs. There were the ordinary things besides, a spot of daily gardening, watering and exercise, turning up for meals, community recreation, and more than anything else, there was the weariness that tends to overwhelm me towards evening so that I feel as if I can't think one more holy thought. And then I tell myself I need to catch up on world news, all the latest disasters. I just want to stop thinking beyond desiring to be close to God. The very desire to be close to God is already prayer. Now, the daily rosary appears as a paramount expression of love and devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. One likes to say it because Our Lady asked for it. She likes it, but a lot of people like me complain that as such they have long since run out of things on which to meditate while saying the rosary. So this is where something began to come together for me. Since my joining in with Our Lady in her rounds, I had begun to feel I wasn't pulling my own weight and should be contributing something, as Scripture says, something that is lacking in the suffering of Christ. I should be doing something more than just attaching myself to Our Lady's efforts and the rosary became my first challenge. Not just the saying of the rosary, but I would say it in a new and different way. 
I had already begun the practice of asking my dear friend, the Holy Spirit, give me little things to think about, to take charge of my meditation in the decades of the rosary. But then I realised that here could be a partial answer. I should begin a decade, such as the Annunciation. And in the length of time of the Ten Hail Marys, which occupy the distracted and active part of the brain, I should look around for some of the things in this mystery that indicate or hint at something of the love that is in it, God's involvement. I rapidly find that it is everywhere in the mystery. And then as I arrive at the glory be, I can put my I love you back onto all of them as a whole. Thus I will be participating beautifully in the rounds of redemption. All the mysteries of the rosary open up to us an extraordinary field for discovering the finest gold. The lead up in the story of the mystery, the people involved, how they were even feeling, what sort of God's perfect plan, a mighty arrangement involving everyday things. Then if we are living, living in the divine will, on top of everything else, we can actually be there present, watching, experiencing with those involved, loving beyond ourselves. As a monk, I had been seeing myself at Holy Mass and saying the divine office as the church. Jesus, of course, is the church passing through the world, transforming, enlightening, uplifting, comforting, strengthening, healing. If I am the church, it is in Jesus that I am church. I would see myself on a hilltop saying the Mass simultaneously with Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit right there. As a priest, I am representing millions of millions, praying in the power of the divine will. Leaving aside all distractions symbolised by the hilltop and entering into the words of the sacred reading. I can now find traces of divine love everywhere. It is all charged with the grandeur of his presence and all I have to do is to appreciate it and love him back in the divine will. In the Psalms of the Divine Office, what better way, what more convenient way of playing my part with Our Lady and her rounds than this, taking my life as it comes and seeing it as opportunity to become involved more completely in that love process of the Trinity and loving back again. In the people who come to our guest house, there are some who immediately impress one. There are others that might not have the same effect. In my years now in the guest house, since returning from my 28 year stint on the mission, I have found that everyone is equal in the love that God has put on them, and that even the most broken can offer gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and my job is to love back my friend, the Holy Spirit, in that each one of us has been loved into life and bears the artistic touch of the creative God, creator God. When the monks enter the chapel in procession, they bow first to the tabernacle, then turn and bow to the presence of Jesus in each other. This too is occasion for putting our I love you, Lord, back on the divine love we see in each other. It may happen, as when one is watching the news, that some people in no way betray a connection with the Lord of Glory, but that is the business of the Lord of Glory, who holds them and all things in existence. But in our recognition of God's love for those people and for us through them, we can place our love back onto God's love, thus the rounds of sanctification. I have manual work that takes me outside into the garden, I now look to see the hand of God in each plant, in the trees that make a mess, in the weeds, in the water. They all cry out on those days of summer heat, the poor nature of the soil. And with Our Lady, I acknowledge the God of creation and that everything from the rain that falls, the sun that shines, the frost of the night time. The flies that bother me as I work, to the waters, the flowers that make it look and smell good, they can all be subjects for loving God back, always, of course, in the divine will. I see all this as a practical outlook on rounds. To sit with an endless list of God's love activities and putting my love back on each of them 
may work for some people and indeed for others might be the only way. But for me, my mind would not be in tune with my words but on other things. Finally, if I have done my best to bring together the scattered ideas, areas of my daily activity, then I can justly ask Our Lady when going to sleep at night to let me accompany her on all her rounds through the night as Louisa accompanied Jesus through the universe. It's a good way of making the night work for you and for all, if you don't forget to include that. You can also ask the Holy Spirit for the divine version of the night to offer his infinite, perfect and eternal worship of the Father, offering it on behalf of all and even substituting for everyone from Adam to the last person for offering all their nights to the Father in the divine will. During the rounds, the way that I am now doing them, that is, by inserting them into my daily routine and including everyone ever, just growing into it without any pressure, to, but depending on his loving reminders, I find it is great fun, a beautiful ongoing contact with the most intimate joy of the very Trinity itself, and all the while making up to the Father for what I and everyone owe him. As the writer of the three volumes of Drops then aptly concludes when he says that the rounds of creation, redemption and sanctification are God's qualities in action by taking possession of the divine acts of wisdom, power, love, holiness and beauty present in them, may such acts be drawn into our souls. This is an admirable place to conclude using that very select word, awesome. Yeah.